Okay, let's come back to the nerve cell for just a minute. So we said that it's a nerve cell, a motor neuron, that activates the contraction. And I'm um, just looking at the structure a little bit more. So um, we've got here, shown in yellow, is a nerve cell, a motor neuron. And it can have many connections um, in, into multiple um, muscle cells. In fact, there can be, well, we'll see an example a little bit later. There can be hundreds of connections from one neuron um, to many muscle fibers. And the site where they connect is called a neuromuscular junction. Makes sense, neuromuscular junction. That's the two cell types that are being joined. Okay, so you can see here, this is just a nice picture. All right, we've got these branches coming from a nerve cell. And again, there are multiple neuromuscular junctions from this one nerve cell. This brings us to the idea of a motor unit. Okay, so one neuron, one motor neuron, can innervate multiple muscle cells, multiple muscle fibers. And that whole collection is called a motor unit. The fact that we have motor units is a useful thing. Okay, so you might have um, multiple neurons that go and inter innervate different cells in a muscle. And if you need just a very slight contraction, so like if you're trying to pick something up that's not very heavy, um, then only some of those motor neurons will be activated. If you're trying to pick something up that is really heavy, then more of those motor units can be um, activated. Okay, so this is called, uh, or it's possible to have a graded contraction. We can vary the strength of the contraction um, through this, this neural control. The fact that there are, right, neurons controlling what the muscle fibers are doing. Okay, so with motor units, uh, let's just get a couple of examples of this. Motor units are interesting in terms of the, the abilities that they allow us to have, the levels of control that are possible. Um, okay, so in terms of controlling fine motors, motor abilities, so fine muscle movements, like with the eye, so I have a picture of an eye here, um, right, you can look at something directly ahead, or you can look at something that's just like two millimeters off to the side, that's a very fine control of the muscles in your eye. And in order to do that, what we have to have is a lot of, a lot, either a lot of nerves involved, or um, in other words, each nerve is tied to only a few muscle cells. So, um, in the other extreme to that is if you have a neuron that innervates like a ton of muscle cells, you know, that's not going to give you very fine control of that muscle, but it will allow you to have a really strong contraction. So it tends to be uh, that the larger muscles of the body have larger motor units in that sense. One neuron tends to branch out into, um, it could be even hundreds or thousands even of muscle fibers. So lots of neuromuscular junctions in that case. Um, Takeaway from this is that control, fine control and strength, those are sort of trade-offs. Usually muscles are either specialized for one or the other. There are a few different types of contractions. That are, that are observed when we study muscles in vitro. So in other words, this is not in a, in a living system, but rather if we just take a muscle and we study it um, based on electrical stimulation artificially, uh, what we end up seeing is a couple of characteristic things. So if we apply just one, um, one electrical shock, so one stimulus to a muscle cell, what we will see is something called a twitch. The muscle twitches. And so this is a quick contraction um, followed immediately by relaxation. If we apply two electrical shocks, one after the other, okay, so here's the first one, here's the second one, what we end up seeing is that the contractions of the muscle, they can actually piggyback on each other. So if the first one, um, if the first contraction hadn't quite ended, if this muscle hadn't quite gone back to relaxing yet, um, then what will happen is the second stimulation causes an even stronger contraction. So they kind of add together. This is called summation. Contractions can sum together. If we take our electrical shocks and move them closer together, closer and closer together. So increase the frequency of the electrical shock. What we'll see are the twitches move closer and closer together. Makes sense. At some point, um, 
at some point, if we move the shocks closer and closer, then the muscle is just going to stay contracted. It's going to be a sustained contraction. The muscle doesn't have a chance to relax between the shocks. And that is a situation called tetanus. So right here what we have is complete tetanus, and that would eventually be followed by fatigue. Eventually the muscle is going to, um, is going to become fatigued and stop contracting for that reason. Um, but this is complete tetanus. Don't confuse this with the disease tetanus. Um, it's the same word but applied in two different contexts.